Okay, here we are with the JCR Acoustics and Vospa crossover video. This is my friend Dijon. This is a homemade CNC. He poured the molten metal in his garden, so go check out his channel. But before you do that, make sure you watch this one because I'm going to be swapping the front of the Fidelity speaker for the oak piece, and we're going to be cutting out all of the pieces for another speaker on the CNC machine. But within 10 minutes of getting going, we managed to break one of the tools and smash one of his windows in his shed. So first we had to fix that one. <laughs> oh, Ooh. that's clean. That's one, yeah. Granite to the rescue. So whilst Dejan was fixing that, you can see him there in the background trying to put the glass in. I was acting as technician. It's actually really quite easy to use the CNC machine. So all of the parts were stuck down with double-sided tape. And then you were just changing the tool out for the different uh, paths. So you can see the unit works with a cool little remote. And that's how you set up where the datum is. And then here, Dijon's basically just explaining to me the tool path that it's going to take. So it's going to cut out the inner circles before doing the outside perimeter. And away it goes. So you can see the different kind of paths it takes. So when it's just doing a cutout, it's doing like a basic X, Y movement. And then here when it's bobbing up and down, that's basically when it's doing the contoured, the slanted edges or more detailed parts. And just like that, there you have one section of the parts ready to go. So here's another quick whip pan of the electronic setup he's got. So it's all custom PCBs and that basically tells the CNC where to go. And on the yoke, you can see that we're doing a number of different passes with different tools. So starting off with a standard flute cutter just to get out the basic shape. And then going in here with a ball nose cutter, I think it was a three mil one, to do the final passes. So it finishes with a cross hatch, which makes it slightly easier to sand. Um, but as you'll see later on, it's still a lot of effort to remove them. So it's quite satisfying to watch. Um, when it's working like this, you obviously you want to be paying close attention, um, but we are also getting on with other jobs at the same time. But it does a really good job here, and there's no issues. Most of the time really goes into the setup of the CNC as opposed to the actual cutting. And then finally, once it's done, all of the front tessellation pattern just goes around and cuts the piece out ready to be removed. So as you've probably seen, we do have dust extraction for when we're working with MDF, um, but because you don't want to mix plastic in with all the sawdust, we didn't use it when we were cutting out the acrylic. Dijon makes a pretty, pretty futile attempt with the vacuum cleaner there, but it does get some of it. But these are going to be the media control buttons and also the PCB windows. So it's just being cut out of a 5mm perspex sheet. So we had to run this tool pass fairly slow. There's a lot of intricate detailed parts, especially where the button slots into the media controls. And we did actually have to run through this one twice. Uh, we used the wrong cutter the first time round, but it was worth redoing and doing right because they did come out really nice in the end. So that's kind of it on the CNC side of things. We didn't have much time to film an intro or outro because we were there from about 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. It was a really long day. But as I said, most of that time was in the setup of the parts and getting things going. Uh, but it was fun all round and definitely something I'd like to do again. But now we're back in my house and we're cutting out those little bits that the CNC didn't finish. We didn't want to go too deep through the oak and go into the, the CNC bed. So I think if we were to do this again, we would probably have a sacrificial bed. But this is where the real time comes in. You can see I'm sanding away at those little crosshatch patterns. And it took me quite a long time, but you can see that's what we're going for on the top of that image. Like a nice smooth finish ready for Danish oil to be applied. So before I lay down the first coat, I go with the white spirit. Uh, it does recommend to do this. Just make sure any remaining dust is gone. And then using a foam brush. I just do one quick layer and then a few minutes later you come back and dab anywhere where it's pulled because you don't want to have too much because your finish will be all plasticky and not very nice. 
So I think I did a total of three coats. I only did two on the feet, um, purely because I forgot to forgot to do them the first time round. But you barely see them, so they they look they look pretty much the same. It's quite therapeutic, so I'm going to leave you with some ASMR sound. Delightful. Your note, it doesn't sound quite so nice, sped up a thousand percent. So with the final coat supplied, it was time to remove the old MDF front. So I'm just taking off the base plate here. That's uh, so really come into its own already because I have had to open up a couple of times now and it just makes accessing everything super easy. So I unwire the speakers and then unscrew everything. And this is why I didn't glue in that MDF front because now I can just easily remove it, ready to swap in the oak. And these are heavy drivers, so I had to be fairly careful when taking them out, but uh, nothing, nothing too difficult there at all. If you are interested in the entire build of this speaker, it's my previous video and I literally show you everything from the building of the frame to painting it and installing the electronics. And I've also linked everything I used and all of the materials in the description on that video. So even though I resized the oak front because I didn't want to have to plane round like I did with the MDF, I found it didn't fit perfectly. But rather than trying to plane with some janky setup again, I just decided to do a little step with the Dremel. And that was sufficient in making sure the back, you know, could slide all the way through. And the reason I only have to do the step on the back is because the whole speaker sort of tapers to a smaller end at the back. So even though the front's wider, you still have to accommodate for when that slides in. Here's the PCB window. You can see it fits really nice. Um, and it definitely just brings a better aesthetic over that PCB. The media controls I'll show you at the end. Unfortunately, they didn't work with my touch control board, but I think that can all be adjusted in a future revision. So before I glued the oak front, I just wanted to make sure everything fit properly and drilled out the pilot holes for the drivers. And then once I was happy that everything was gonna fit, I took them all back out again and started to apply the glue. So the key here was I didn't want any sound or air to leak. So I'm just making sure anywhere where there would be a gap has got plenty of glue. Um, the oak front didn't actually, even after all of this, fit in perfectly. So I did have to remove one of the tweeters at a later date and put some black silicone around it. Um, but it's all nicely sealed up now. I just need to adjust my tolerances in any kind of future CAD revision. And you can see I don't have a power screwdriver. Uh, this did give me blisters, but... That's, uh, that's oak for you. It's definitely not as easy as MDF when it comes to working with. So as all that is left to do now is wire back in the speakers before I can replace the base plate. Um, these are just the passive crossovers for splitting the sound between the tweeters and the woofers. And once that's all sealed back up, just got to apply some glue on those feet Again, before I had them just as a, a tight fit with those dowel joints. Um, but now I'm happy with them, so they're glued on. And the foam is, is placed on those so it doesn't scratch any surfaces. <laughs> and yeah, this thing, this thing is pretty heavy. It's about 18 kilos. So I just thought I'd show you uh, me struggling to flip the thing over here. Quick fun fact for you. This is what Betty Davis eyes sounds like sped up a thousand percent. I did finally get the logo in focus this time, unlike the last video, but covered it with my hand for most of it. But um, that's it. Now we're just on to testing and showing you guys how this thing works. All right, so big shout out to Dijon and his channel Vosfer for basically enabling me to make the speaker. Uh, his CNC is super cool and you should definitely check out his channel. But as you can see, I'm here with what is finally the finished speaker about a year in the making. Um, I was originally just going to leave on the white MDF, so that's this front here, because uh, I thought it looked fine as is, but it was definitely worth going the extra mile and doing it with this. It was a lot of effort to remove the CNC machining marks, um, and if I was to do it again, I would definitely put a border around the edge, just so it isn't easy to chip. I think we could probably refine the final pass on the CNC, so it wasn't much as much effort to sand. 
but all in all I'm super happy with it. The PCV window and the media controls came out great. Uh, I have to admit though the media control window, the touch controls don't work through it. I think I just need to adjust the sensitivity. So for now I've left them off, uh, but I will show you how they work. So jumping up top, you can power up the speaker just by pressing the on button here. And then once it connects to your phone, uh, you can see that it comes up as JCR Acoustics. And because it's a programmable Bluetooth IC, uh, you can basically set it to any name you want. So if I was to sell these, you know, people could have personalized names if they wanted to. Uh, then as well from the media controls, you have the option to go to next track, play pause, previous track, volume up and volume down. I might just do a, a completely clear window actually and just put the media control icons on the PCB itself and that would probably look a little bit cleaner. But here are the media controls. So the way this works is there is a separate piece for the button and that slots into place here. And then the whole assembly just goes into the slot on top of the PCB. And then you can see I've included the icons within the window. And then you can push that button to fire it up and of course see the LED light through the clear plastic. The speaker is battery powered as well. So it's got smart charging and it will trickle charge your battery and know to switch between the two when you put in the power cord. But you might be wondering why make something this big have a battery. Um, it is portable but not in the sense of you're going to take this thing down to the beach or down to the park. It's portable in the sense of I can take this to a house party, I can take this into my garden and then I can set it down and know that this will be loud enough if you know you've got 20, 30 people there and the battery will last easily about 18 hours. So it will last the house party and it will last clean up the next day. So that, that was the kind of idea behind it. You know, if someone's into hi-fi like myself and you go off to uni, you can take it with you. You know, it's, it's versatile enough to go from room to room, but you're not gonna be, you know, using it as a boom box. It does weigh 18 kilos and it's a solid oak and MDF. So probably not the kind of thing you wanna be carrying anyway. But the option is there and it works really nice. So just to finish off then, you probably noticed in the video that I cut out another set of MDF with Dijon, and that is gonna be basically the next speaker I make with housing joints, just a better, more refined version of this, and that is one I probably will sell. Uh, but for now, until I have a workshop to do it in, I don't think my house could go through another build with this, you know, spraying the thing in my garden, so that's gonna be paused. But if you are interested in acquiring one for yourself, do get in touch through my website at www.jcracoustics.co.uk. But for now, I'm going to enjoy listening to this one. So thank you so much for watching. And until next time, keep designing, keep making, and keep on creating.